Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss in detail about general exteroreceptors. Okay, in our previous video we have discussed about the classifications of the receptors and we have discussed in which we have discussed about exteroreceptors, proprioceptors and interoreceptors. So we are first focusing in, in this video about exteroreceptors. So you can increase up your speed up to 1.5x to save our time and please subscribe my channel and give support to us. Okay, so starting with the external receptors. So external receptors is divided into two parts here. Okay, for two sensation basically. The first sensation is epicritic sensation and the second sensation is known as protopathic sensation. Okay, protopathic sensation. What does epicritic sensation mean? What does protopathic sensation mean? So starting with epicritic sensation. So epigrytic sensation involves the finer aspects, okay, the finer aspects of uh, such as touch, pressure, or uh, proprioception, okay. So this type of it is finer aspects of touch, pressure, proprioception is coming under your epigrytic sensation, and protopathic sensation includes pain, temperature this type of sensation is included in protopathic sensation clear and in epigrytic sensation examples are simple that is your fine touch two point discrimination okay two point discrimination and palesthesia that is detection of vibration stereognosis that is recognition of shape like this okay and in protopathic sensation it includes uh, sensation for temperature and pain okay now we will first discuss about your touch receptors then we will move for temperature and pain receptors okay so first we will be discussing about touch receptors so these are the general external receptors for epigrytic sensation these are divided into two parts again touch receptors are again divided into two parts that is superficial receptors and the second part is your deep receptors now coming to the superficial receptor why the name superficial is given because superficial receptors are present in the epidermis or or maybe in papillary layer of dermis okay epidermis or papillary layer of dermis clear and when you talk about glabrous skin in glabrous skin that is non hairy skin these receptors are these receptors are Merkel receptors okay Merkel receptor or maybe there will be Meissner's receptor Meissner's corpuscle so these two types of receptor are present in glabrous skin that is non hairy skin okay clear and in hairy skin these receptors are hair follicle receptors okay where hair is present that receptor is known as hair follicle receptor so again I am telling superficial so receptors are present in epidermis or papillary layer of dermis in glabrous that is non hairy skin these receptors are Merkel's recept Merkel disc, Meissner corpuscles, and in hairy skin, these are hair follicle receptors. Okay, now coming to the deep receptor. Deep receptors are present in deeper dermis or maybe in subcutaneous tissues or deeper dermis, as I have told, because it is the name itself suggesting deep receptors. So it will be present in deeper dermis or subcutaneous tissues. Okay. And the deep receptors are same in both hair and non hairy skin. But uh, superficial receptors are different because in non hair, Merkel's and Meissner, and in hair, hair follicle cells. But when we talk about deep receptor, the receptors are same for glabrous and non glabrous skin. Okay, so same for hair, hairy, and non hairy skin. There is no difference in that. Clear? Now, deep receptors examples are examples are two. That is Raphne's end organ and your Pacinian corpuscles. Okay, this is Raphne's end organ and this is Pacinian corpuscle. PC for Pacinian corpuscles. Clear? So this is a, this is the basic about this. Now moving to the next. That is a touch, pressure, and vibrations are the different forms of same sensation. Okay, pressure is felt when the force applied on the skin is efficient to reach the deep receptors. Okay. Pressure. When we will feel pressure, when we when the force applied, okay, will reach to the deep receptors. 
then we will feel pressure okay and uh, and pressure is felt okay and then where touch is felt and when touch will felt touch will be felt when the force is insufficient to reach the deep receptor it means it is activating only superficial receptors that is uh, merkel's disc or meissner's corpuscles okay so again i am repeating touch pressure and vibration are different form of the same sensation pressure pressure is felt when the force applied on the skin is sufficient to reach the deep receptors whereas touch is felt when the force is insufficient to reach the deep receptors those for directed by superficial receptor that is merkel discs and meissner's corpuscles and coming to the vibration so vibration and rhythmic variation in pressure okay so rhythmic variations of force that reaches the deep receptor okay so it will be sensed by your deep receptor sorry it will be sensed by deep receptors clear now the receptors are again divided into two type that is first one is your slowly adapting receptors and the second one is your rapidly adapting receptors okay slowly adapting and rapidly adapting and receptors and slowly adapting receptor example is rafnis end organ and they are slowly adapting receptors is meant for detect sustained pressure okay it is for sustained pressure detection so they are useless for your vibration because in vibrations i have defined vibrations are rhythmic variations of forces rhythmic variation of force rhythmic variation of pressure is coming under vibration okay so slowly adapting that is rafnis end organ is useless for your vibration it is not useful for vibration because slowly adapting receptor that is rafnis end organ detects only sustained pressure not the variation in pressure okay whereas rapidly adapting receptor that will contain passing in corpuscles they stop discharge in response to sustained pressure they are only useful for variation variation in pressure okay so it is useful for your vibration it will detect vibration okay so the lighter the rate of adaptation of a receptor the greater is the vibration frequency it can detect we will discuss adaptation in next video so this was the touch receptors okay along with it touch sensation can also be divided into two types deep and superficial touch as we have discussed now moving to the next that is pain and temperature receptors okay our discussion will be on pain and temperature receptors so these are the general external receptor for protopathic sensation clear pain receptors are basically of four types first we will discuss about pain receptors so pain receptors are basically of four types the first will be thermal nociceptors which will detect extreme temperature that is extreme temperature that is cold if lesser than 5 degree centigrade or extreme heat extreme warm that is more than 45 degree centigrade the second one is your mechanical pain receptor okay it will respond to intense pressure then will be polymodal receptors okay it can detect both chemical me chemical mechanical or thermal stimuli and the last one is your silent nociceptors are not activated by noxious stimuli they are activated only by inflammation okay they are activated only by inflammation not by nociception so these are the receptors for the pain now coming to the receptors for the temperature so receptor for temperature may be two types cold receptors or maybe your warm receptors okay these two types of receptors are for your temperature receptors now moving in some detail about that so one is receptor for moderate cold one receptor which is responsible for moderate cold is known as cmr1 okay that is a cold and methanol sensitive receptor one its full form is cold and methanol receptor sensitive receptor one two types of vanilloid receptors are also temperature sensitive okay vanilloid receptors which is for noxious heat painful heat that is your vr1 and vrl1 vr1 vr1 first we will discuss about vr1 so vr1 produces pain in response to vanillin group of compounds such as capsin 
okay protons temperature above 43 degree centigrade clear so br1 is responsible to any lean group of compounds such as capskin or protons or responsible for temperature more than 43 degree centigrade and vrl1 it is responsible for temperature above 50 degree centigrade it is for temperature above 43 degree centigrade it is for temperature above 50 degree centigrade okay now moving to the next that is pn and temperature as carried by a delta that is also known as type 3 okay and uh, c that is also known as your type 4 okay sensory neurons so for pain a delta will carry your fast pain and uh, c fibers will carry your slow pain and we will consider temperature so a delta will carry your cold and your c fibers will carry both cold and warm okay so these are about the extra receptor so thank you again for watching the video and please like and subscribe my channel and give support to us okay so thank you again